Every year, tens of thousands of applicants apply to medical school, but most don't actually go in and finish their application. A lot gets stuck in the mist and the fog that encompasses the whole application cycle. So here today, I'm going to remove that fog, get it all out of the way as I show you guys my entire MCAS application, MCAT GPA and all. So let's jump right into it. What's up, YouTube? Hope you're having a great day. My name is Jason Krasin, incoming first year medical student. I'm here to share my journey into medical school with all of you guys. So please be sure to like and subscribe and join me on this amazing adventure. It was because of all those out there, like Dr. Gray from Med School HQ, Sean Anderson, and Pre Rock, who have given me the inspiration to share a video like I am today. They really help me see what goes on in the entire application. So I'm going to share all that information with you. But before we do, you guys know the drill, it's story time. All right, let's get right into it. So as you guys can see here, this is my entire AMCAS application. I've had to cover up some things for privacy reasons, but I promise the rest of the way, it's all 100% transparent. And I'll share everything that I can. So the first thing that I wanna point out to you guys is the submission date. In 2020, the first day to submit was May 28th. So I only submitted one day later. My recommendation and the recommendations that I've seen from others is a week or two at most. What I really want to emphasize is do not rush to apply. Make sure that you're confident that you have a strong application before you. And if that takes some time, be sure to take it. But what I will say is make sure that you're ahead of the game. You know, start early, start getting your activities and personal statement all lined up and ready to go so you can submit it as early as possible. So when I applied one day later, it took me until June 12th for the whole application to be processed. So that puts me at about two weeks, which is amazing because as you wait and you apply later and later, it could take six to eight weeks, which really puts you back in the whole application cycle. Now, the rest of this information is just personal information that is not necessary or helpful for you guys. Next page, similar information, more personal stuff, not necessary, more personal information. And we can see that we're getting into the academic record. So as you guys can see here, I went to California Lutheran University. There I majored in biology. So a lot of my classes were all very much biology based with some liberal arts infused in those courses as well, like you guys can see. Now, the one thing that I really wanna point out to you guys, I did receive a C plus in my organic chemistry lab section. Now at the time I thought that I was done for, there's no way I could apply to medical schools. I hope this is a boost of confidence for all of you who did not receive just A's and B's, so that there are those that got C's in courses and got into medical school. However, for the most part, you guys can see, I got only A's and B's with the one C plus in that course. Now, one thing that I will note is that this course was a big learning curve for me. I wasn't ready for the organic chemistry lab section coming from general chemistry. So one thing that I did is that in my secondaries, I actually wrote about it and wrote about how much of a learning experience it was. And it showed off in that the fact that the following semester, I got an A minus in the lab section. So leave a comment down below. Let me know if you guys want to see how did I write my secondaries for medical school. So as we jump down lower into my grades, you guys can see more A's, A minuses. And this wraps up all the courses that I took while in undergrad. You guys will note that I took three community college courses. I took those during summer. So I made sure that I was able to evenly balance out my schedule during the fall and spring. I would take one class during the summer and I made sure that I had an even balance throughout the year so as not to exceed a very high credit count. So that way I could do my best in every class possible. And now, as you guys can see here, this is my overall GPA. Uh, within the my science GPA or the BCPM was a 3.83 and I'm very proud of all the work that I had to put in to maintain that high of a GPA. In my all other section, it was a 3.91. So that was my non-science courses in which people mostly do better in. So as you guys can see here, less than 0.1 greater than my science GPA, which is typical for a lot of students. My overall GPA was a 3.86 which is a very strong GPA to apply to medical school with. Now, if we look lower, you guys can see my MCAT. 
I took the MCAT twice. Uh, without naming names, if you guys know that the MCAT is hard and the MCAT is important, uh, that's how I studied for the first test. And I personally didn't feel like it prepared me well. And it was a little bit of my own misjudgment of what the MCAT actually is. It's a brutal test. But as you guys can see, I, I took it a second time. And that second time, I jumped over six points. And that mainly came from the biology section. And I think that that was my own self-studying and how I properly prepared. So leave a comment down below. Let me know if you guys want to see how did I self-study for the MCAT for my second exam. The second thing that I want to note is that I took the MCAT after I had already submitted my primary application. So this was a unique situation. I knew that I wanted to be as early as possible in the application cycle. So with one MCAT score in hand that I was not confident with applying, I put that in, applied to just one school, let it process, and then once I received my second MCAT score, that's when I filled out the rest of the school list. And so I think that that was a very important decision that I had to make in order to ensure that I was early in the application cycle. So that way I got my secondaries early and, you know, hopefully interviews early because of that. In this following section, we go over my experiences or typically known as the activity section of the application. If you guys haven't seen my previous video, I talk about the path that I took to medical school and my unique one at that. So please be sure to watch that one to get a better understanding of these experiences that I'll have listed. First experience that you guys can see here is that I was an assistant coach for the club soccer team at my university. So after graduating, I came back and helped the program that helped me grow so much, not only as an athlete, but as a person. Next, you guys can see my position at Amgen as a senior associate in their process development lab. And you guys will note here that I marked it as one of my most meaningful experiences. And I think that it truly was meaningful and made me a strong applicant because I understood or I try to understand medicine from a different perspective. I was seeing medicine from the research side of it. So this following section, I then talk about all the awards and honors that I received. So what I would recommend, lump them all in together. I would not separate them out into different experiences or activities. If you guys want to know how I wrote all my activities and how I organized my thoughts, leave a comment down below and I'll make another video for it. And again, as I talked about in my previous video, being a private tutor was an amazing opportunity for me. The next activity that I discussed was my poster presentation. And here I just want to note to you guys that I marked it as zero hours, which I recommend. There's no point in inflating it because admissions committees know that this is part of the process and part of what research is. And so your hours would mostly go into the research category. The next activity that I discuss is a club that I was a founding member of. I had a friend come to me who had an interest in creating a club that would help teach those CPR and overall basic life support in what I think was most importantly as both for certification, but non-certification as well to help teachers and students and faculty know the basics of CPR if they were ever in that situation to help those in need. My next activity is my overall physician shadowing and clinical observation. So this is how I formatted my physician shadowing and clinical observation. A very quick and dry, a lot of ad admissions committees know what shadowing is. They know that you're not the hands-on involved person that you like to think you are. So keep it short, keep it dry, and admissions committees will know what it is. My next activity was my research time spent in undergrad. As you guys will see, I marked this as another meaningful activity. To reiterate, you get three meaningful activities that you can expand upon. Now, leave a comment down below. Let me know if you guys want to see how did I pick my three most meaningful and how I was best able to expand upon the extra space that they give you to discuss why it was most meaningful to me. So this next activity, I was a department assistant, which is more commonly known as a teaching assistant at other universities. This was an amazing opportunity for me because I had to not only remember the information of prior years, but I had to teach that same information. So it took a whole new way of digesting it down. And I think it really helped strengthen my MCAT score because of the time that I spent learning all this information. Now, the one activity that I will note that seems like it's so out of left field was my time as an, part of the ice rink maintenance at a local ice rink. There, I was a guy driving the Zamboni. I had a blast. But what I most enjoyed was my time when I'd help out with the special needs clinic that they would host every week. An amazing time with amazing people, and I'll never forget it. So this next activity that I marked was for the leadership position that I held 
during undergrad in the AMSA club, or in essence, it was our pre-med club. So this next activity shows the two jobs that I held during my freshman and sophomore year. There are the common jobs that you can find along campus. It's working at the rest hall in the front desk, as well as in the sports arena and helping there. And now my last activity was my time spent at a local free clinic. So I do want to note that this was a meaningful activity for me, but I had already written it in my personal statement. So I didn't want to expand upon it there and reiterate the same words over again in my personal statement. Now, a lot of people do a mix of both of expanding upon the most meaningful and putting it in the personal statement. I felt like it was going to be too repetitive. So I decided to keep them as separate. So this next section is my personal statement. And while I did say I was gonna be as transparent as I can with the rest of my application, there's some personal information in here that I would like to keep private. However, if you guys need any help, any tips or tricks, or wanna see little segments of my personal statement, feel free to DM me on Instagram or leave a comment down below and I'd be more than happy to share that with you. So this is the entire list of all the schools that I applied to. Now, with over 100 MD schools, it's very difficult to narrow down. I don't want you guys to apply to all 100. That's going to be too expensive and a big waste of time. So let me know. Do you guys want to see how I narrow down my school list and what resources I use to come up with that list? In a broad stroke, I applied to these schools because of my MCAT, my GPA, and where I thought I would be the best fit. So that's my entire ANCAST application. I know it seems like a lot. I know it seems like it's a very daunting task, but you gotta just get it working. Write something down, write anything down. Let me know if you guys wanna see tips and tricks on how did I come up with my activities, which ones I came up with. How did I write the activities? How did I write my most meaningful statements? How did I write my personal statement? You know, anything that you guys have that's a question, leave a comment down below. Let me know if you guys wanna see it in a future video. I really wanna thank all those who shared before me, all those who posted their own AMCAS applications, whether it was Dr. Gray and Med School HQ showing how to and how not to apply, whether it was Sean Anderson who showed his entire AMCAS application or the many others that I watched. And I hope to help all of you guys make sure that you guys are standout applicants that you'll get into medical school. So please be sure to like, subscribe, and tell your friends all about this as we embark on the journey of MD in the making.